A happy and pleasant day to each and every one. Welcome aboard again to Ecom Channel. Today's lesson is significant in the process of research writing. We will talk about how to effectively construct your research title. So what are you waiting for? Let's learn together. Watch this. first impression last. As such, if you want to leave a great mark in your panels during a research title defense, you must ensure that your title is appealing and that it would catch their attention positively. Thus, it only means you have to be familiar with how to properly construct your research title. So what are the things you need to consider in writing an effective research title? Check this out. Your title must contain words that showcase the contents of your study. For instance, it has to show the scope of your study. When we say scope of your study, it refers to what the study will cover. What will it talk about? What will you investigate? And how are you going to show that in your title? The answer is by means of using keywords. What are these keywords? They are the variables or the concepts. But what is variable and how does it differ from concept? Basically, variable is used for quantitative research. Variables in quantitative research simply refers to the following. To a person, example, how many senior high school students enrolled in Abbey's for the school year 2021-2022? In place. Which are the most affected barangay in Mandaluyong with the biggest number of COVID-19 cases? A thing. What material incentives mostly motivate employees to perform more? Or a phenomenon, an occurrence or event. How many civil wars are recorded in the history of the Philippines? These are the variables that you are trying to measure, manipulate, and control in some way. And they are quantifiable, meaning they have numerical value or can be measured by numbers. In answering those questions that I have asked, you will need numerical data. For example, the total number of the following. Students' enrollment, affected barangay, employees' incentives, and civil wars. Now here are some other examples of quantitative variables. Height, weight, age, response time, subjective rating of pain, temperature, and score on an examination are all examples of quantitative variables because they all have numerical value. There are two major types of quantitative variables. One is independent variable it is the variable that is being manipulated or the one that varies it is sometimes called the predictor it will predict the outcome or treatment variable this variable causes a change in the dependent variable the other one is dependent variable it is known as the outcome the effect or response variable because it refers to the result of the study through the changes created by the independent variable. These two variables demonstrate a cause and effect in the study. The independent variable is the cause. Its value is independent from other variables in your study. The dependent variable is the effect. Its value depends on changes in the independent variable. Look at this example, effect of room temperature to the mathematics examination score of students. Pretending that you design a study to test whether changes in room temperature have an effect on mathematical test scores of the students. 
Your independent variable is the temperature of the room. You vary the room temperature by making it cooler for half the participants and warmer for the other half. Your dependent variable is math test scores. You measure the math skills of all participants using a standardized test and check whether they differ based on room temperature. The next variable is concept. It is used in qualitative research which is known as categorical variable. Somehow it is considered as variable but it is non-numerical or not quantifiable and cannot be counted or measured like the quantitative data but instead it is categorized. The data in qualitative research are transformed into final description, themes, categories, and codes. Examples are satisfaction, perception, beliefs. These are things that we cannot actually measure numerically. We usually describe the variables into category like, let's say, for satisfaction, into very satisfied, satisfied, or dissatisfied for perception into positive and negative. Now here are some other examples of categorical variables like eye colors which include black, blue, green, brown, hazel, gender, male and female, religion to Roman Catholic, Iglesiani Cristo, born again Christian, and many more. For a qualitative study, the title should contain the concept that you want to explore, investigate, or explain. Unlike in the quantitative, that we measure variables here in qualitative, we focused on deeply understanding the conceptual variable or the categorical variable. Example, best practices of Abbey senior high school students in dealing with academic deadlines. Our categorical variable here would be referring to the practices of the senior high school. The next one is you have to limit your title into 12 to 15 words. This is in accordance with the set standard title length of American Psychological Association or APA publication manual. Look at this example. The best practices of Abbey Senior High School students in dealing with academic deadlines in various subject areas. This example title is too long for a title. It is consisted of 16 words. You can make it shorter yet still specific and sensible by removing unnecessary words like the article the at the beginning and some words at the end part of it. There is no need to say in various subject areas in the title as it could just be discussed in the contents of the paper. Academic deadlines anyway signals that we are talking about subjects and their requirements. Again, you must eliminate unnecessary words and retain only the key ones which would basically show the following basic parts of a title. Research goal refers to the result of the study. The independent variable is the topic or the issue, while the dependent variable is considered as the variable affected by the independent one. Concept variable is the variable that cannot be counted or quantified. The locale specifies the place where to conduct the research. And these are the basic parts of a research title which I am going to discuss in my next video lesson. The next thing that we need to consider in writing a research title is do not use acronyms. As much as possible, spell words which may confuse your target audience if you use them in letter form in your title. However, for school names mentioned in titles, it is okay to use their acronym as it would be understandable in the context of the title when we talk about school name. Example, the impact of Abby students' time management in achieving academic success. It is pretty obvious that Abby's there as used in the title is a name of school, considering that the scope of the study is students' time management. Acronym works well when we want to reduce the number of words to use. 
but an acronym that is well known in one field may not be common in another so you must be careful on that look at this one one of the most important skills for proofreading a manuscript is ATD. Poor ATD can result in embarrassing factual errors like not defining acronyms at first mention. Confuse what we are talking about? What does ATD stand for? Here we have used it to mean attention to detail. For all you knew when you first read it, it could have meant advanced technology demonstration achieving the dream, or something else that does not quite make sense in the context of the sentence. Same thing when we are writing a research title. Example, assessment of the SST for students and the CMT for teachers. Either the acronyms in this title are very common in the author's specialized field, or the author has coined them himself because the author is so familiar with them. He may not have realized that the target readers, some of whom may not be from the same discipline, may not understand them. Ideally, the author should have written the title as Assessment of the Social Skills Training for Students and the Classroom Management Training for Teachers. Therefore, it only means that we can use acronym in titles only when they are generally understood by everyone and are commonly used like RNA, DNA, HIV, DOH, DOST, DEPED, or names of schools which usually is understood as school within the context of the title, and many more. The next thing that we have to avoid is subjective or biased terms in the title. Example, Abby's teacher's best practices in dealing with low-performing students. The word low is subjective and too personal. It seems that you have already judged the school and are saying that there are students in the school who are not performing well. As such, it connotes negative impression, which we must also avoid in writing a title. Lastly, we should not also include the following phrases when we come up with our research title. These are unnecessary words at the beginning of your title, so you should avoid using them. And those are the things that we need to consider when we are writing a research title. That's it for today, my Ecom learners. I hope you learned something from this video lesson. God bless us all and always wear a happy heart.